Hi, this is Jacob Anderson, and this video is about how to evaluate your bearings. I've done uh, videos specifically on the quill bearing and on the control shift bearing, but this is a video just uh, general things to look at for all of your bearings. So if you've done the teardown of your headstock, you can get your fingers on every single bearing and really feel the condition of it. Just because you can turn the shafts doesn't mean your bearings are fine. And the shopsmith does have eight, uh, seven or eight different bearings in it, depending on the age of the machine. Seven for the earlier ones, eight for the later ones. So all your bearings have to be in really good condition, 100%, so that your machine can do the tougher things like sawing and lathe work and other things that you run for quite a while. So the smallest bearing is the control shift bearing. Here's one that's seized and the person kept using it, grounded it down to nothing. It should be sticking out like this, the button. So this person ignored the sounds and ran it down to nothing. So this is the smallest bearing in the machine. It can seize up uh, without notice, <laughs> without warning. Uh, tiny little balls inside the bearing so they can go. So. Sometimes you find it like this. Sometimes you might find this laying around. Uh, if you start hearing metal on metal sound, just stop and investigate. So this one, there's no surprise when they go. And I've got a separate video about that. All right, the next smallest is a quill bearing. A single bearing quill shown here. Uh, all bearings, if you see grease sticking out the sides of it, if you see rust, that's bad. And you can just turn it. This one here really feels crunchy inside. The grease has dried up. Then the ball bearings inside get rusty. So it's just a downhill thing. If your bearings are more than 15 years old, you probably need some bearings. Sometimes you see disintegration like this. The outer dust shield has it's coming off on this side and it's already gone on this side. This was from a motor. The motor bearings are the next larger size. These are your drive sleeve bearings. They go bad too. This one I can barely turn, but you can see grease was coming out the side of it. Uh, the drive sleeve has a lot of downward pressure from the belt pulling in one direction all the time, the tension. So after 10 or 15 years they're usually needed. And here's bearings from a greenie with a Gilmer drive, and I, can, I can't even turn them. They're that locked up. So certainly those are bad, but if you feel any crunching, roughness, see any disintegration, grease popping out of them, rust on the surface, all of those are reasons to replace them. And then the final bearing in the headstock is this idler shaft, which your control shiv sits on. They're pretty tough. I only replace about four or five a year out of 150 typical machines. And the reason they're tough is they've got two rows of ball bearings inside with tons of grease. So they're quite heavy duty. I had to cut this one apart to see the insides. And this is the style that I sell, the old school but Shopsmith has gone to this newer style with two bearings and I only used a couple of them and they both disintegrated within a year or two. They're definitely wimpier than the old school ones that I sell. So if you have this style, I'd just get rid of it because it's going to fail pretty soon. They've only been using them for seven or eight years now. But this one, uh, this is rough feeling. The shields disintegrated from it. I just think they're bad news. So, If you opened up your machine and found this type, I'd just get rid of it. Buy one of these for me. That They typically go forever, but if you feel, again, any roughness or see a lot of grease that was squeezing out, you could replace it. But these rarely do go bad. All right, this is the website address for my website. You can access all of my YouTube instructional videos there. You can access my parts store, where I also sell full-length repair DVDs, troubleshooting manual, 
uh, the parts for the insides of the headstock, including the belts and all of these bearings we've just talked about. So uh, check out my website. I think you'll find tons of great information for you there. Thank you.